In April of 2014, 80 students from America's premier learning institution, Stanford University, applied to MSNE 276, the most rigorous entrepreneurship training program on the planet. Only 40 of them were deemed fit to pass through the gates, while their classmates were left to fall by the wayside. Those who did make it, however, would have to endure the most grueling 10 weeks of their young careers. These four men held the keys to these students' futures, and they did everything they could to keep them from achieving their dreams. Some of the trials these students faced were external, and the others were internal. This film follows the passage of four young heroes who would do anything that it takes to learn what it means to be an entrepreneur. Four main pillars characterized their journey, and during each trial, they took leaps of faith, which they probed with their own personal hypotheses. Their instructors threw everything they could at them, but in the end, they got results and obtained valuable insights along the way. This is the story of the survivors of MSNE 276. The initial phase of their journey, learning about types of investors, appeared innocent and straightforward at first. Big name VCs like Sequoia, Greylock, and Excel should be good investors to target because of their vast assets, connections, and reputations, right? Wrong. Enter MSNE 276's first challenge, Mariah Finley. In an F-bomb-laden and discouraging tirade, Designed to test the students' will to truly become entrepreneurs, Mariah convinced the heroes that their initial hypothesis was erroneous. Friends, family, and angels may not have a vast array of resources to offer, but they are usually the first ones to support you. VCs do have the assets, connections, mentorship, and reputation to offer, but they demand more equity, seats on the board, and accountability. During Mariah's lecture, I had to learn the hard way that different types of investors are valuable at different stages of development. If I'm going to be founding my own venture someday, I need to take into account several factors, such as my personal motivations, my resource needs, and if I have leverage with a good product in an attractive market. As the heroes continued on their journey, there was no way for them to prepare for what came next. The evil Tom Byers and Trevor Loy devised a devious experiment to pit the young heroes against each other, the term sheet negotiation. With their dastardly plan, Tom and Trevor assigned each of them roles as either leaders of a new venture or partners of a venture capital firm, naturally putting them at odds with each other. The young heroes fell right into their trap. Going into the term sheet negotiation, I thought that valuation and funding amount raised were the most important terms. Tom and Trevor assigned me to be the VC, and so I thought the incoming CEO would focus on these terms when evaluating the term sheet. Chaos ensued. The young heroes found themselves not only fighting over valuation, but also over other factors, such as equity splits, board composition, and liquidation preferences. The negotiations became increasingly aggressive. They found each other lowballing terms, playing good cop, bad cop, and even walking away from the negotiation table. But towards the end, the young heroes started to realize what the evil Tom and Trevor were doing to them. They began to grasp the idea that selecting a financing partner is not an optimization problem with a single correct answer. They settled their differences and were able to come to a deal. The term sheet negotiation was really frustrating for us because the opposing diet proposed a 53 million valuation and only wanted to give us one board seat on a five person board. As the negotiation progressed though, we realized that there are terms to consider besides just valuation and board seat composition. It's also really important to consider the relationship you have with a VC. Frustrated that their efforts to derail the students were not working, Trevor and Tom went back to the drawing board to devise a new challenge. This challenge was about developing a viable business model and evaluating if a business is financially feasible. The matrix are not very important. Everyone's telling me about these startups, so I guess we should start, just start building a product on a go and iterate. And that's more important than, OK, 
get an interest. Enter the evil Randy Commissar, Tom and Trevor's co-conspirator. Armed with a secret weapon, the Plan B framework, Randy caught the four heroes off guard. As the heroes persisted and attacked the framework, they realized that metrics are crucial in helping a business test and validate their assumptions before they could build a product. Randy's lecture was pretty tough on us. It made us realize that we probably shouldn't have started building a product from the go. This is actually very useful for us to look at other companies. From successful companies, we can find analogs. And from failures, we can find analogs and borrow their metrics. And this will give us tons of data before starting building our product. After nine weeks of the most intense entrepreneurship training imaginable, Trevor and Tom were stunned at the way the students were rising up to all the challenges. This is when they revealed their final ace up their sleeve. Their next challenge was an issue that many an entrepreneur had succumbed to. From what I've heard, venture capital firm never invest in entrepreneurs who fail. This is taken into consideration by investors when they're making a decision whether to invest. Trevor and Tom pulled up three whiteboards, forcing the heroes to recall their deepest and darkest failures. They hope that this exercise will bring the heroes to grief, debasing their will to pursue entrepreneurship. They know their plan is working when an unnamed student who was heartbroken over being dumped by his girlfriend cannot muster the courage to open up and share his failure publicly. But then, Stephen Carpenter of Cake Financial fame walks to the front of the class and steals the stage from Tom. He openly talked about his failure and about how it made him an even more successful entrepreneur the second time around, and he inspired our heroes to open up and embrace their failures. Stephen and Anthony taught me to man up and to tackle my failures head on. I learned I gotta keep my integrity intact and build my personal brand as someone who has dealt with failure in a sensible way. The four young heroes had one final challenge to face before continuing on with their careers, the VC pitch. However, by this time, they had survived all the trials and obstacles that MSNE 276 had thrown at them. They had attained valuable tools and insights which they would use to tackle any entrepreneurial challenge in the future. Together, they are the survivors of MSNE 276.